there saplings welcome back to esoteric moment my name is danny and i have a pagan book review for you again this week this book rune reading your life by delania davis is an interesting one in that it's a book a 30-day journal and a set of rune cards all packaged in one set this summer i've been exploring different types of divination there are some that i have really fallen in love with like Oum and even tarot that have been a part of my practice for a while but I wanted to stretch myself a little bit and try something new so when the opportunity came to review this book I was very intrigued because I've never worked with runes before so I'm definitely looking at this book as a beginner I'm also looking at this book not as a Norse practitioner and obviously runes are traditionally associated with a Norse practice, although lots of people in different practices will choose to work with runes as well. The first part of the book really dives into how the author discovered runes, what their practice is like, stories about finding it in the larger world, and how you might add elements of runes into your practice, whether you're a pagan or just exploring something new. I'll be honest, while it's really easy to read, it's very approachable, the author's perspective was sometimes a little hard to feel relatable to. The overall first part of the book really felt like they were talking to an audience of either like a really young teenager or maybe like the parents of a teenager interested in runes there were some assumptions about kind of class and what life looks like that made me a little uncomfortable and i just didn't feel like i was the right audience for this book if you are a beginner then this is definitely for you if you are really into nuanced research and like historical reconstructionism this is not <laughs> the book for you i think it's so kind of generic to today's modern interpretation of runes that it's going to turn off a fair amount of pagans who are looking for something a little bit more richer or really rooted in history and myth. That doesn't mean that this is a, a bad book. It's just that the first part is so targeted to a very like specific younger audience, like I said, that it, it makes it harder to recommend it for lots of people. The information seems solid and there were parts that were funny and enjoyable, but such a casual tone and some people are really gonna love that, but it just wasn't quite right for me. The second part of the book is a day by day, 30 day journal, and it has questions and activities kind of segmented by weeks so that you can start working with runes and integrate it into your practice on a daily basis. I think guided journal prompts are really useful for a lot of people and that part of the book is going to appeal to a larger audience. So maybe the first part of the book isn't your cup of tea, but you use the second part to really dive into establishing a practice and asking questions that help you relate and understand the ruins in a different way. And this is a page that I didn't fill out, um, but it's got day four, daily focus. Ask yourself, what do I need to focus on today? And then pull a rune. And it's got a place for like the symbol and the meaning. And then how does this apply to what is happening in your life today? And a huge section to write on. Day four continued. What yes or no question do you have for today? Pull a rune. Why is this question important to you? and then validation, what happened. So it really walks you through the process of choosing a rune, learning that message, and integrating it into meaning of your own life. The final part of the book is just kind of a reference section. It has each rune, their pronunciation, one word meaning, and kind of this modern meaning, um, a little bit of story, just like two pages that quickly take you through the lesson or message of the rune. And then of course the book comes with a set of cardboard or at least cardstocky runes. They've got this pretty modern purple backing and for someone who is looking for an entry level set and doesn't want to make their own, this is kind of nice. You can really try out runes without committing too much money or time into like getting a set and connecting to it in a fancy way. If you already have a set, of course you can use those and maybe you use these little cutouts to paste into your journal or something like that. It 
it's kind of nice just to have them. Obviously won't appeal to everyone, but I think it does work well with the concept of the book, which is basically this all-in-one 30-day jumpstart, get ruins into your practice. Overall, the concept of this book is nice and is definitely going to appeal to a large audience of folks who are kind of baby pagans and looking to get started. And it's a really easy entry level introduction to runes and divination in general, basically. This book, however, was not for me. While I got to know runes a little bit more and explored divination, and I actually did the 30 days, you know, I gave it my all in exploring this book. I just couldn't quite get over the author's tone at the beginning and just felt kind of out of place. Like I was not the audience for this. This week's sapling shout out goes out to Jake Taylor. They wrote a comment on my review of the Obad Bard course, and they actually talk about how they're interested in joining Obad, but they're a follower of Norse traditions and a practitioner of Norse magic. And so they're a bit confused about how to go about this process of maybe exploring Druidry while still being a Norse practitioner. And I would say that most of Druidry does not require you to believe in certain deities, nor give up other elements of your tradition. It's really something about adding on to your practice and creating this mentality about creativity and hospitality and your place in the world. And Celtic traditions and Druidry are pretty close cousins to Norse traditions. And I've mentioned before how useful it can be in our practice to explore something slightly tangential to what we usually are focused on. It can open our eyes and see something new. So I would say, Jake, give it a try and, uh, you know, start reading some of the basic Druidry books and see if it resonates with you or if it gives you a new perspective. If you want to be a sapling shout out, don't forget to leave a comment on this video or chat with me over on Instagram in the comments there. You can find me at Esoteric Moment. Thanks for watching and as always may you find peace in the sacred grove.